depictions of TCD. These are actual cases presented by Dr. Andre Alexandrov of the University of Texas. A typical TCD signal from the middle cerebral artery of a normal subject is displayed as a low resistance waveform with a sharp systolic upstroke, followed by a stepwise deceleration. The end diastolic velocity is between 20 to 50 percent of the peak systolic velocity, with a pulsatility index of 0.6 to 1.1. Typical MCA velocities are under 80 centimeters per second. TCD has been used extensively to study cerebrovascular reactivity, particularly in individuals with risk factors for cerebral arterial disease and known cerebrovascular disease. Hypo and hyperventilation, inhalation of air with varied CO2 concentrations, and acetazolamide injection are commonly used to alter CO2 concentration in the brain to study vasomotor reactivity. Hypoventilation increases CO2 concentration in the brain. A normal response to hypercapnia is the dilation of brain vasculature, particularly the arterioles. Consequently, there is a decrease in blood flow resistance. TCD studies of hypercapnic states show an increase in mean flow velocity and a decrease in pulsatility index, typically to below 0.6. Hyperventilation decreases CO2 concentration in the brain. A normal response to hypocapnia is the constriction of cerebral vessels. Consequently, there is an increase in blood flow resistance. TCD studies of hypocapnic states show a decrease in end diastolic and mean flow velocities and an increase in pulsatility to above 1.2. TCD is considered effective in the detection of intracranial stenosis, particularly MCA, ICA siphon, and vertebrobasilar stenoses. In this case, a proximal M1 MCA stenosis produces a significant focal increase in mean flow velocity. Aliasing, a wraparound of the waveform caused by abnormally high mean flow velocities, and turbulence are also seen. Low resistance signals are often found in the post-stenotic segment due to compensatory vasodilation. Post-stenotic TCD signals may exhibit an increase in mean flow velocity, a decrease in pulsatility, and a blunted appearance of the systolic component of the waveform. In another example shown with correlating MRA, a 70-year-old patient with multiple LMCA TIAs has a significant focal increase in LM1 MCA mean flow velocity. This points to the diagnosis of an M1 MCA stenosis. The mean flow velocity exceeds 100 centimeters per second in this vessel and is more than twice the velocities found in the other vessels examined. TCD is particularly useful in the detection of vertebrobasilar artery disease, especially in patients with dizziness, syncope, and TIA. One of the advantages of TCD is that it can examine both of the vertebral arteries and most of the basilar artery, depending upon the patient's anatomy. This example shows elevated velocities starting from the terminal vertebral proximal basilar section up to the distal portion of the basilar artery. Note that serial evaluation is performed so that the precise location of stenosis or occlusion may be correctly determined. This consistently elevated velocity indicates a moderate stenosis present throughout the entire basilar segment. As previously mentioned, TCD complements other imaging modalities and should be included as part of a thorough neurovascular examination. In the case shown, a flow gap on MRA appears to indicate an MCA occlusion. However, MRA often cannot identify near occlusions as slow flow velocities of under 30 centimeters per second appear as flow gaps rather than areas of reduced flow. In this case, what erroneously appeared as a full occlusion on MRA was actually a near occlusion as an MCA signal with a velocity of under 30 centimeters per second was discovered with TCD. Significant increases in TCD mean flow velocities are also seen in vasospasm following subarachnoid hemorrhage. TCD is particularly useful as it may be performed bedside without the use of contrast agents and daily serial studies may be performed as indicated. Some clinicians use the Lindegard ratio to differentiate between vasospasm and hyperemia, both of which produce elevated mean flow velocities. This ratio compares MCA velocity to velocity in the proximal ipsilateral ICA. Ratios that are higher than 3 may indicate vasospasm while ratios lower than 3 may indicate hyperemia. In this case, a focal mean flow velocity in the MCA, which exceeds 200 centimeters per second, and an MCA-ICA ratio greater than 6, indicates severe proximal arterial vasospasm. Digital subtraction angiography shows severe vasospasm in the M1 segment of the MCA, terminal ICA, and A1 segment of the ACA. Correlating focal elevated velocities are found with TCD in these vessels. 
The example shown here from the MCA shows a waveform exhibiting characteristics typically seen with severe vasospasm. After balloon angioplasty, followed by intra-arterial injection of papaverin, note the return of the MCA TCD signal to a normal velocity. This correlates with the angiographic findings of improvement of vessel patency. Markedly increased intracranial pressure produces a high resistance TCD signal with decreased end diastolic mean flow velocities and increased pulsatility as shown in this TCD waveform of the MCA. In this patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage, hydrocephalus coexists with severe ACA vasospasm. The ACA waveform shows a significant focal mean flow velocity increase with a concurrent increase in pulsatility. Focal velocity changes and pulsatility of flow are key findings on TCD as indicators of the pathophysiology of stroke and related syndromes. As discussed previously, hyperemia can produce elevated velocities similar to those seen with vasospasm. In this case, increased velocity is due to hyperemia with an MCA-ICA ratio of less than 3. Occasionally, a combination of vasospasm and a compensatory flow velocity increase may coexist. TCD is also used as an adjunct to other modalities such as EEG and nuclear brain scans in the diagnosis of cerebral circulatory arrest. TCD is easily performed bedside and therefore may be used prior to moving the patient out of the ICU for confirmatory diagnostic testing. Cerebral circulatory arrest produces reverberating signals with a reverse diastolic component in both MCAs and the basilar artery. The entire circle of Willis must be evaluated, and the reverberating signal seen in all three major intracranial vessels for a period of at least 30 minutes. Occasionally, focal occurrences of this reverberating signal occur in pathological conditions other than brain death. It is essential that TCD results are confirmed by clinical examination and other studies before a definitive diagnosis of brain death may be made. The communicating arteries typically cannot be identified with TCD under normal conditions. However, collateral channels open when a proximal hemodynamically significant stenosis or occlusion is present. The typical collateral flow pattern seen with ICA occlusion is indicated in this graphic. In cases of collateral flow, communicating artery segments may be seen and usually demonstrate relatively increased velocity and low resistance. The shape of these waveforms usually resembles that of a donor arterial system. This TCD waveform example shows a posterior communicating artery segment in a patient with an ICA occlusion. Note that this patient also has an arrhythmia, which results in an irregular cardiac cycle and variable mean flow velocities. TCD is used to monitor MCA flow velocity during carotid endarterectomy to assess ischemia during clamping of the ICA and is particularly useful during surgery because of its ability to assess intracranial hemodynamics in real time. Other monitoring devices may take several minutes to display changes in perfusion. TCD is currently being evaluated for its ability to detect emboli during surgical procedures. Serious reduction or cessation of mean flow velocity may guide the decision to shunt. In this example, MCA flow velocity falls significantly from the pre-clamp baseline when the ICA is clamped. The surgeon inserts a shunt and velocity returns to the pre-clamp baseline level. Subsequently, a sudden drop in the mean flow velocity prompts the surgeon to check the shunt which is found to be improperly placed. The surgeon readjusts the shunt and baseline flow velocity is restored. TCD is currently being evaluated for its ability to detect high intensity transients in the signal. These transient signals, when accompanied by an audio chirp, are thought to indicate the passage of emboli through the intracranial circulation. The gain is typically reduced, as in this example, so that the spectrum is barely visible and the high-intensity blips are clearly defined. Note that this patient is on a heart and lung machine, which accounts for the lack of pulsatile flow and absence of defined systole and diastole. Multigon would like to thank the following physicians for their invaluable contributions of case studies and clinical information. Dr. Charles Tegler of the Wake Forest University School of Medicine, Dr. Andre Alexandrov of the University of Texas at Houston, Dr. Eric J. Heyer of Columbia University, and Dr. Frederick W. Kremkoff for use of the facilities of the Wake Forest University School of Medicine Center for Medical Ultrasound. Multigon Industries is committed to continuing its history of advancement and education in medical technology. A variety of educational tools are available from our clinical educational division, including training programs, anatomical models, reference charts, and materials.